Yo, what's good, y'all? My name is Chris Shreve, a.k.a. C. Shreve the Professor. Welcome to a new episode of Who Needs a Classroom podcast. Today we're going to talk about vision. Um, when I first think of vision, uh, I think of in sports like a point guard, you know, be able to see the floor. Or I think of, you know, a kick returner, a punt returner, being able to, you know, see the whole field. Sometimes a quarterback the same. Uh, I played a lot of sports growing up, and so that's where I think of when I think of vision. Is is can you see the court around you when you when you play basketball as a youngster? You got to learn to keep your head up and not look at the ball while it bounces. You got to be able to look out in front of you. Uh, if you play, you know, baseball, there's a lot of vision in that. You got to really be able to see that tiny ball and somehow hit it with a with a bat. And when it starts getting pitched at you real fast, it's, it's difficult to hit it. So um, that's one of my first kind of thoughts when I think of vision. Um, is you know, kind of have is like, you know, that's one of the the ways vision gets challenged. But then when I think about kind of, that's like my baseline <laughs> understanding of vision. But then when I think of vision, like higher level or whatever, I'm thinking of like, you know, your personal vision for where you want to go, <clears throat> your vision of, of where you see yourself in the future. And then somehow actualizing that, you know, somehow seeing it and then being able to execute and so that's that's a whole other thing, but I think the sports reference kind of kind of works and helps me sometimes to to understand how seeing things works. So um, one kind of version of sports in particular helps me see this. Um, you see it sometimes sometimes in regular sports when you're really kind of when things are happening fast and there's kind of lanes that open up. This happens as a kick returner or a punt returner when you're kind of really trying to just find a way to slide through the defense and, and find your seam or whatnot, different ways to term it. <clears throat> but in in a, um, a sport with a path, so mountain biking has this, and, and in mountain biking you have this downhill you know, gravity effect sometimes that really adds speed to it. Um, snowboarding has the same thing. And so in both of those, and snowboarding in particular, you have to see the, the, the path. Now, in mountain biking, a lot of times it may be defined for you. You need to really see the path that's already there. Um, snowboarding has this, but if you're in a woods trail, sometimes there's one one path, but sometimes it opens up and there's many, and sometimes that's almost confusing to the rider, and so they have to find a way to, to spot one path, and that path, if you're distracted by the all the things in front of you, is really difficult to see. But then when you sometimes just see this opening and see, how, okay, I need to connect all that, and then you start to see how the seams work. They start to open up. And I think that's the vision. I think that's you knowing and seeing how you fit through that picture. I think it's the same for the, you know, for Allen Iverson um, slashing through a defense. You know, I think it's seeing a spot. Mike Vick did this so well um, of, of starting to scramble and then seeing a lane that almost shouldn't be there, but he knows how fast he is and he can make that somehow. And it, it closes just as he goes through, kind of on some Indiana Jones type, you know, grabbing his hat type thing. But I know in snowboarding, one other thing about seeing the path is is some concept. I can't. I think I may have read it in snowboarding magazine, or no, maybe a friend used it in their teaching. I, I taught snowboarding at one point, taught lessons, and sometimes taught like trick lessons, and um, did things in the park, and and, and worked. Um, you know, kind of around the sport for a while. And somebody said, or pro may have said one time, that they weren't going to really attempt the trick until they could see it in their mind and see how they were going to do it and imagine themselves or really see themselves and picture them coming off this jump or this lip or this, this hip that throws them a certain way and then imagine how they would float in the air with their body and then land it. And they had to be able to see it in their mind or have a vision of it before... They could execute it, they, and they might take extra time to sit there and kind of study it, or look at it, or kind of a, you know have a visualization of them of them going off this jump because different jumps throw you different ways. There's different landings. Certain tricks work better than others, type of thing. So snowboarding has a lot of this idea of vision, and I've applied that many times. So if I'm going to drop some some cliff that's a little bigger than I'm you know comfortable with, maybe my comfort range is like a a five foot cliff drop or eight foot, but this is like a ten or twelve and I'm, you know, maybe not comfortable, then you need to be able to see it before you drop. You need to be able to see, not only like maybe scope it, but literally in your mind's eye, be able to imagine yourself dropping it and see the landing and, and how you're going to come off the, 
off the cliff. <clears throat> so it's interesting how your, your mind's eye works that way. Um, when you play sports at a high level, um, there's lots of film watching, lots and lots of, of studying you know, maybe some of the best techniques and then maybe studying your own techniques as you went through a drill yesterday and then comparing the two or against your teammates, you know, somebody really executing the drill well, you know, this, this senior, this upperclassman, and then you're this, you know, the freshman trying to, trying to somehow follow that model. And it's difficult, but that helps develop this vision, I think, of oh, that's what it really is supposed to look like. And my, my coach would say it all the time, that's what it should look like. And then he kind of wants you to see that over and over to where that's what you can then, you know, execute in a similar fashion. So I think the vision kind of serves, or kind of the mind's eye, it serves as this anchor that, you know, if I can see the path up ahead of me on a mountain bike or, you know, whatever the sport might be, if I'm, if I'm charging forward and there's a line that I have to stay on or stay with or find, which is really happening in time because I'm moving so fast that this line has become, you know, it's like a road, the way that a road kind of becomes this, you're moving at this, you know, rate of speed that you almost forget about because you're just, you know, you're passing people in traffic, but you have to kind of find those lanes almost. So it becomes, your vision becomes this anchor, this point of reference, this way of kind of seeing the future. Okay, if I do this, I can go right there. And then you kind of execute that. So how does that apply, I think, from the physical space almost into kind of the greater physical sphere within which you live and operate? And how does that, how's your vision work for next year? Or for, you know, capitalizing off this set of experiences that you have and these these ideas of how of where you'd like to go and making those two work together, you know, how do you pull that off? I mean, that's a, that's kind of the traffic that we're maybe talking about. Um, but I think the key thing is the vision aspect. Is is so let's do that that traffic thing. So look in your blind spots. You know, what have you not thought about as you try to switch careers? What have you not thought about as you try to apply this strategy? Is this strategy very 2015 and we're moving into an entirely different place in 2025? So you have to figure out what does that mean? <clears throat> so I think there's these two level of visions I wanted to hit on, you know. There's the big picture, right, of, of what are your big goals? Where do you want to end up at the end? What's this huge mountain you're trying to climb? But there's also the small, you know, focal point of this step, this move, this next day or next action or the one you're on right now. You know, those are two different perspectives that have context and should kind of collaborate together because you know right you're if you have this big dream your day-to-day interactions and day-to-day focus and your repetitions and your practice should somehow reflect the fact that you know that's what you want so your today reflects where you want to be next month and so on and so forth and so I think that works both ways so you know, there's kind of a double context here. So the big goal should inform your today, right? But then sometimes today feels, you know, like work or feels monotonous or feels stressful or feels like a, a weight you can't carry or however it feels, it needs the context of the bigger goal because today doesn't feel like like you're going to make it. You know, today just feels like, oh, I got to get through this workout or I got to somehow go to work for eight hours on very little sleep or I got to whatever it might be, you got to, you know, have the discipline to go through the thing that you don't want to go through or the day you don't want to go through to get to the place you want to be. And so that's where I think the context of the big picture, you know, you have, you know, the little kind of reminders around the house. They're like, you know, if you, how, how bad do you really want this? Cause at 6am you're not really trying to go for that run. But if you really want the things, your goals are set at, you may have to do that to accomplish them. And so I think again, just in the same way you decided to start working out at 6 a.m., that was because you want to get this place. You know, that's kind of the one way. Then the reverse is when in the morning when you don't want to get up and go do that, you have to remind yourself, okay, this is a necessary step towards that. And that context will, will you know, get you out of bed and keep you moving. So it helps to make sense of the steps that are involved to get there and of the obstacles and of the, of the patience that's required. So... Um, I hear folks sometimes say something to the effect of, you know, what's your why? I've heard that question, you know, um, you know, where do you want to go? Basically, what, what's, you know, what do you have, you know, 
or or we can not just what do you want to where do you want to go, but when why do you want to get there? Um, what are you motivated for that destination for? You know, what's your goal? What's this big picture idea you have? You know, and then you can assess, of course, your motivation for that. But if you have this big picture, you know, that should inform your day to day. Don't just be out here just doing kind of keeping up. You know, I think I've got some podcast on that. Like, don't just try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't just try to do, you know, you're a rapper, so this is what rappers do. You know, figure out why you're doing this and where you want to go with it and then execute. And that's where I think this whole vision concept I'm talking about kind of comes into play. So we just had Martin Luther King Day. Um, Rest in peace to one of the most beautiful and powerful and strong, courageous souls that America and the world has ever known. When I was, I think, like in ninth grade, somewhere in there, uh, a teacher, maybe 10th, a teacher had us focus some speeches, or we had, no, I had to do a paper on some orators <laughs> or some speech givers, or I think we had to choose, you know, we had some op- some options, but we had some constraints. And I ended up choosing Martin Luther King and FDR and I think JFK, and I did, I did discussions of their, you know, kind of their public speaking and what made them special and and Martin Luther, Martin Luther King was obviously kind of, I don't know, he kind of stands above most humans in terms of his ability to speak, but then obviously he's walking the walk. It's not hollow words that are just, that sound good, you know, it's not soundbite material. Even though it is, he's speaking eloquently as it gets, but he's walking the walk. And so he has this vision, he has a dream, and he's willing to march for it step by step by step. And that's that's part of the... I think ultimately powerful um, legacy is for me is is, see, is seeing that ultimately seeing a goal that he even you know said he may not, he will likely won't get there to see but had the had the vision to understand that everything he was doing was necessary stepwise to motivate others to inspire others to you know the whole nine so. When I think of a dream, I think that's kind of an eloquent and amazing idea of a vision of of seeing what you want and being courageous enough to go after it and to put literally your life on the line for that day in, day out. <clears throat> so amazing version of a vision there. Um, today that I'm recording this is an inauguration day. And so I'm, I'm thinking kind of what's, you know, what's Biden's vision? Um one of the point of references for new presidents is, is I think it's FDR's, you know, 100 days, his first 100 days. And he had these, you know, very ambitious goals and, and went straight full steam ahead with the New Deal and whatnot. And so it'd be interesting, as I think many of us are kind of sick of living in historic times, but they're not going anywhere. So it will continue to be historic times. So we'll see what this 100 days of Biden's administration um, brings. But um Hopefully there are echoes and ripples of the visions and dreams um, of hope of, of the administration he was with, you know, Barack Obama. And that, that was their platform initially. And so, not platform, but that was, you know, one of their big kind of messages was hope. And so to bring some of that back will be a vision that I think a lot more of us can get any kind of momentum behind. Um, so kind of to close out here, just thinking about again visions. <laughs> um, I wasn't even going to get into quite even get into the idea. Of, you know, you think of spirituality or uh, mythology or religion. Uh, much of that is kind of vision based, and in a different term version of the word visions. Maybe it's folks hanging out, out around a campfire in a desert, looking at the stars, and, and figuring out those visions. But you know, getting into you know, if you're getting into spirit quests and hallucinogens and all that, it's a whole other whole other level of visions. But um, the levels I wanted to touch on are really, you know, kind of seeing what you want and then finding the ways to get there. And that's kind of the small steps towards the big picture. And so we're in January still. Many of us are, you know, attempting to stay on these workout plans and, and piece together this new year, new you type thing. So think about those goals you had maybe at the end of the year or that you were reflecting on or that, that you've talked about in your mind or to others or you've maybe written down. Think about those big picture things as you figure out tomorrow's tasks to do. 
And then tomorrow when those tasks that you have to do come up and they're not, oh, they're not as fun as they were yesterday in terms of like execution and you feel like you have to exercise some of that discipline, well, have that big picture in mind because that will kind of adjust your focus to the now and say, okay, this is bigger than me jumping rope right now and then going to get my shoulder workout. This is part of my big plan that I have for myself to get to this other goal. So, you know, whatever that might be, whether that's your daily writing, whether that's your daily quality time with your child, whatever it might be, you know, find ways to execute the things that you have marked in life as important to you. You know, as you're an older adult or as you prog- older, as you progress through life and get older, your you know, your your time becomes more and more valuable, I think, because you feel like there's less of it. When you're 19 or 20, you're like, oh, man, I'll never be old. But as you head towards 30, head towards 35, head towards 40, and, and on and on, I guess, you'll just kind of look at it and say, okay, wow, in 10 years I'll be this old, that type of thing. And so you realize your time is so valuable. So learn this at whatever age you're at, that your time is valuable. And so focus in. Where do you want to get to? You know, you don't have to do the little five-year plan, 10-year plan. You can, but you don't have to do that. Just think about what's important to you. You know, probably some of this quarantine pandemic, you know, crazy world we lived in in 2020 and that we're going to continue to live in for a while uh, is, is helping your priorities to somehow come into better focus. So utilize your vision to see where you want to go. Utilize your vision to look left, look right, use your peripherals and whatnot so you can somehow figure out the lay of the land and how you're going to maneuver, you know, watch your back as well. That's a, that's a vision that is important. See if somebody's watching your back, you know, if you're not checking it every so often, make somebody else is checking it for you. Make sure you're, uh, you're looking out for yourself. It's a, it's a wild, wild world we live in out here. So, uh, yeah, that's my, that's my main take for the day is, uh, is have a vision and then somehow, once you've seen it, execute so that you can get towards it. So thank y'all kindly. I uh, hope you're well. Hopefully today's inaug- inauguration is the beginning of something different and better. Um, we'll see. America has been a lot, of, a lot of dark places in its long tenure. So hopefully we are crawling out of one instead of uh, digging farther in. Uh, thank y'all for listening, as always. Um, Who needs a classroom? I do. You do. We all do. Peace, y'all.